Hello, DG lovelies. This is Nisha M, your geek mom, and Joe coming to you from Diversely Geek Discusses, where we will talk about everything that makes up my geek universe, your geek universe, our geek universe, and really look at what it means to embrace your inner geek, express your inner geek, and then transform your fandom passion into positive action. I believe we are all part of one big, huge, amazing geek nation, perfectly imperfect, and I think our fandom passions really help us to learn who we are, identify, and become geek-amazing people. Welcome, join in, be part of our geek family. lovelies to another episode of Diversely Geek Discusses, My Geek Universe, where we explore our journeys to finding and embracing our inner geek, expressing that geek passion in our everyday life, and hey, what that means to connect to and transform our fandom passion into positive action. And I am super excited, super excited, super excited. Sorry, I'm singing. You guys know I break out in song when I'm excited. Today, we are featuring the wonderful team from Man Bites Media. Yes! So we oh, have wow. the amazing Louis Lacau. Hey, yes. guys. And Brandon Lacau. Hey. Yes, we have the and same last name. What? <laughs> and William <laughs> Phoenix. Hello, so, everybody. I have to say, it has only taken, what, almost a year to get all of us together for this recording? Like, right. hello. Yeah. Right, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Come on, people. I was starting to get a complex, okay? So, <laughs> and just, just so, you, so the wonderful fans out there know, I just proved how old of a nerd I am. I gave them a reference to Planet of the Apes, Charlton Heston, and not one of them knew what I was talking okay. about. Okay, is this the scene where at the end of the movie where he sees the... No, 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 you're walking to a trap. No, no, no. Cause you're... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you're, you're, you're going into the hall when he realizes that they were on planet Earth and he yes. goes, Damn yes. you all to hell. Yeah, 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 that one, that one. I guess no, not. That, my bad. Same, okay. same movie. Nope. Same movie. It's a trap. Same it's movie. A trap. Or, or, I'm out. <laughs> no, right. man. No, man. Listen, it was, the, it was the scene when they're in the, in the prison. Like, oh. the prison lightly and loosely, because really it was more than a prison. Anyway, so today... Okay. <laughs> This is an episode of My Geek Universe, and while it's very difficult for the four of us to stay on task, we shall try very hard. Especially when you start bringing up movie references. Come on now. I know. It's my fault. I told you. Geek nerd. It does not leave my life. So basically, you know, I love what you guys are doing with the show. It is a little bit above the PG grade and (laughs) very much on the R grade. Especially this last episode. I'm explaining oh it correctly. God. Let's let's just let's let's, let's put it on the one. But and I've even been on the show, and it has its uh, a beautiful nuance to it. And I do enjoy being on it. I love the relevance of what you do. I love the stories behind what you're doing. Um, so I really wanted us to come together because I would love the diversely geek audience and fandom themselves to really get an understanding of why I like you guys so much. <laughs> you know. Um, so if you don't mind, we're going to go through with from um, uh, whoever would like to start first, perhaps Lewis, because he kind of knows the the okay. idea behind my geek universe. Um, I'll ask a couple questions, and then each one of you can answer it. Or if you think that that's something that you want to answer as a team, that's certainly, you know, I, I leave that up to you as well. Okay. Really, you know, the thing about my geek universe is what we're doing is giving in the um, the fans insight into – our personal journeys in learning to accept that we are nerds and geeks and then expressing that in everyday life and learning what it is to travel a really beautiful and amazing journey, which can also be very, very challenging. And so that we can help other people to kind of connect, you know, to the same thing, to our experiences. So um, basically we let's start out with this. Now, Lewis, I'm going to give you the hardest one, right? Okay. <laughs> um, so we always want to look at what it means to uh, explore our journey to finding and embracing our inner geek. And for you, um, what do you 
me, what do you think um, it means to embrace your inner geek? And, you know, you know how I feel about it, right? That we're yeah, all part of yeah. the geek no, nation. I, I mean, you, everybody is. Everybody's a dork about something. Whether yeah. you're, you're a fan about football, whether you're a fan about movies, whether, you, whether you're a fan about politics, you're a nerd about something. So guess what, guys? You're all nerds, even if you're a jock. You're still a nerd. I mean, if you're going dressed up as face paint, that's kind of nerdy if you think about it. And, you know, everybody has a dorky side. Everybody has something that they're passionate about. Uh, the passion that we bring always is about movies because we talk about movies. That's, that's our main focus. Any type of media aspect, honestly, we love talking about it because it, it involves all the arts. Movies embrace every single aspect of art that you could ever imagine, whether it be audio, whether it be video, uh, visual, whether it be theater, whether it be so many different aspects that are brought together in one single art form. And it embraces every art form, which it is the epitome of nerddom. So, yeah, it's 100% nerddom. And why would you not? Everybody loves movies, whether you're into any classification that you want to fall under or any type of group that you want to go into. Everybody watches movies. That was so beautifully said. <laughs> it really was. That was like an acceptance, an acceptance speech right there. Yeah, that was beautiful, dude. I, I'm getting ready for next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so well, William's... nobody's popping that one. Good night, everybody. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Come on, William. I challenge you. You know you can do this, all right? Come on, okay. especially with question? your journey, um, you uh -huh. know, your personal journey to where you, since I've known you for a long time, um, and even before that, to where, to where you are today, and the person that you've become is just un, un, amazing. So, <laughs> thank you. I champion you. Come on. <laughs> um, well, mine's, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit older than the other my other two uh, wonderful co-hosts. Uh, not by much. <laughs> not by much, but I also come from a, uh, like, I did not grow up in the States. So things like fandoms, things like geeks and whatnot was never really something that I even knew what it was. Like, I grew up in Europe. I grew up in Italy, Germany, Belgium, France, England, Canada. And there, what what's considered here is, like, nerds. It's just part of your education over there like after school programs were singing lessons they were piano lessons judo fencing like you know stuff like that which you know to this day i can still use but the thing is there's really no this declassification between a jock and a nerd because everybody's pretty much like in the same boat so to speak so when I moved here and there was this whole like, oh, do you play sports? No, not really. So you're a nerd or, you know, or you play sports, but you're not good. But you're I didn't really fit in anyway because I I played sports, but I wasn't all that great at uh, at playing sports. But the same token, I still was very much into arts. So it's like, oh, so you're an art nerd, but you're also a chalk. So up until recently, I really didn't feel like I fit in anywhere. So and it was more like a, I tried to find myself in places where I was feeling comfortable, which is where the whole Harry Potter thing came in. Uh, um, I just heard you say token. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I have to say I'm that. I'm sorry, there was crossed wires because I definitely said Potter, not token. <laughs> What is uh, it we'll fix it. We'll fix it in post editing. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> we shall discuss that later. Okay. <laughs> um, but what I found out is that, um, like I said, I, 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 you know, niche is of a is of one generation. I'm a different generation. Lewis yeah. and, and Brandon are borderlining another generation, but we have been able to find this common ground to where it's like. I finally feel accepted. I finally feel like I have a place where I can springboard off of and um, fly my nerd flag without feeling like I'm going to be judged for whatever reason. And then, you know, ultimately filmmaking is my passion, is the career of choice that I want to have, which will come and I'm working at it. But I, I feel at home for the first time. And it all started with like this chance encounter with Lewis. Um, so, you know, every, every week that we record, it's, we find something new about each other and it's like, it's, 
it's like a small family reunion every week because it's like, okay, who's going to say or do what that makes us feel like we yep. to belong and this journey will keep going. Oh, William, you're going to make me tear up, bro. That was beautiful too, man. Man, I got you, man. I got you. I got you, man. I got, I got you, you, man. I was going to say a joke, but damn. Uh oh, that was your one joke in the whole recording. Uh, uh, Checking it uh, off. Go ahead. <laughs> that was beautiful, dude. <laughs> but I I do completely agree with you that every week when we record, it's um, I look forward to ragging on you, and I look forward to you ragging on me, and us laughing at each other. It's the best. It's the best kind of relationship. It is because it, cause it's it's a dysfunctional family without the actual dysfunctional, which can be a pain in the butt sometimes. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so Brent, Brendan, tell me a little bit about you know. I mean, I know your cousin, right? So I'm. I think yeah. you kind of got. Uh, you're going along. <laughs> I don't know if um, he's pulling you along. Or are you pulling him, or is it a mutual journey? <laughs> uh, I think it started him pulling me. <laughs> yeah, <along laughs> for the ride, and then eventually I was like, oh okay, I'm here, you know, and and definitely still I feel. Like, he's definitely ahead of me, for lack of a better term. But uh, I'm there. You know, I'm trying to keep up as much no, as... No, no, no. Hey, hey, hold on a second. No, no, no. All right. I pulled you into the YouTube show. You pulled me into the podcast. Hey. Let's be real. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just along with the ride with my hands up in the air going, wee! <laughs> Sticking your head out the, the window. Right. But Piggy style. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Okay. <laughs> Oh my God, boy. I really have to keep you on task. Ooh, goodness <laughs> gracious me. Um, okay, my friends. But so I, I want to uh, hear Brandon's story, so let's go. No, I just remember um, liking nerdy, quote-unquote nerdy things before they were cool. Like, you know how, like, now everybody likes Star Wars? It's like, I, when I was a kid, like, not everyone liked Star Wars. You, you would talk to them like, hey, do you like Star Wars? And they're like, what's that? what's that nerdy stuff? And you're like, it's cool, man. It's lasers. It's space. And they're like, nah. <laughs> and also, you know, like, I remember just watching Star Wars and getting engrossed in this universe and b- wanting to be a part of it. And also, um, getting <laughs> shown the wonderful world of anime with Dragon Ball Z and yeah. Sailor Moon and all that stuff. Yes. Dude, I would, I would, watch sailor moon happily when i was a child and i was like i wanted to be like them i was like those girls those girls are super cool and that's what i like about fandoms it's whatever you're in the mood for that day you can go into whether it be harry potter in william's case or lord of the rings for lewis or star wars for me or whatever it's, please i don't want this to start being a a contest between the two fandoms because you guys <laughs> well, there is no contest that's, that's, the, that's the best part about dg right it's there is no the whole point of especially my geek universe is that it's all of our geek universes and that we all connect through those things yeah because there's more connectivity than there is negativity Gah. <laughs> oh that was well put very nice yeah, 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 such beautiful <laughs> statements tonight. I'm the only one that can't formulate oh, a proper. Is this like an award show or something? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're we're grooming, we're gro- grooming for the upcoming award ceremony. No, oh, so God. tell I'm me, the only um, one I can come up with a with a nice one. It's so beautiful, and I'm here like I can't even formulate a proper sentence. It's like words on phonics. I like them. Yes, hooked on phonics. <laughs> I need them. I need it in my life, please, oh, for any of the listeners. Just send me what happens when you stay in Miami. <clears throat> hey, um, I, I do find that the common the common bond between all of us actually, and it's funny because I'm coming late to that game, um, um, is film and being in the film industry. So I know that Lewis really has studied, and that this is something that he his life kind of shaped uh, around him following yeah. his, his passion for film and cinematography. Uh, was it the same for you, Brendan? And I, I heard the same for you, William, that you're kind of, what, what kind of, what was your journey to get to where you are or where you, where uh, you identified? Uh, definitely my, 
my 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 cousin so for any of the listeners that don't know my cousin is seven years older than i am so um my cousin was definitely my big brother still is my big brother whatever oh, yeah, bro. Oh, that's, oh, that's beautiful. beautiful i am gonna cry okay go ahead <laughs> um so yes he definitely <laughs> he molded me into the person that he wanted me to be <laughs> oh, and he showed God. me all these messed up <laughs> movies Oh uh, yes. Trying to taint me child <laughs> like irreversible and stuff. And I'm like, what is this? man, this is horrible. Who would ever watch this? But um no, I, I do uh appreciate him sh- uh showing me the world of film because uh, not only did he show me the world of film, but my my cousin is not pretentious. He's not up his own butt because it's PG. Um because there are some people that are really into film that just they they take themselves way too seriously and it's just no fun. No boy, no. No boy. No. So I do appreciate that because I can see well, thank a you, bad man. movie can be good. Oh yeah, always and man. I appreciate that. Some people cannot. So I I do appreciate him not only introducing me to film but also uh, giving me a lighthearted view on it. So yeah. A little bit of paradigm shifting. That's exactly. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's. It's what I love to call um, stepping outside of the box that you've been cocooned in <laughs> and yeah. that living the, the and embracing the geek um, passion yeah. or, or that comes with it, all the hope that comes with it helps us to step outside of the box. So do you, you're kind of, did you have that kind of journey? Yes. Yeah. I, I can, I can agree with that. Like, I don't know. I, it's just, like my cousin has shown me so much. It... <laughs> I don't even like. You had to grow up with us. We were just strange, and he would just show me the the weirdest things, and I was okay with it to a certain extent. <laughs> um, it, it played a lot of like uh, campfire stories and stuff like that. It, it was kind of like oh, and I would go off pontificating about. Yes, I said pontificating. He did it. Um, <laughs> he made it into the show. Pontificating. He made it into the show. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Okay, sorry. Oh, uh, I I pontificated about movies. Only allow one more, Lewis. Only right, one more. Right, okay, right. go ahead. <laughs> and I I would like go go into into the story about movies and stuff like that, and just stories about life and all my my crazy journeys that I've gone on. And then uh, Brandon would just be part of that man. He he would he would love listening to the stories. And I told him, go watch this. Go watch this. What you yeah. see this? Oh my God! What? So yeah, I. There are definitely movies that stick out to me. Like I don't know why I've always remembered when we watched um, Duck Season. Oh yeah, Duck Soup. No, Duck Season. Was it Duck like, Season? It was the Duck Mexican season. movie, right? The, yeah, the black and white Mexican movie about the three kids in yes. the in the, yeah. their apartment that the, the electricity goes out. It's just like a day in their lives. Yeah. That movie. I don't know why I watched that when I was in a uh, uh, freshman in high school. That's the first time I saw it. Yeah. And, stuck with me for some odd reason also <laughs> irreversible and stuff like that watching somebody get their head bashed in is not nice <laughs> okay so i'm kind of hearing that um lewis is has kind of had a mentor mentorship oh, you guys he- have a mentorship um relationship which is pretty yeah. awesome that you know you're lucky to have that but sure you're you know you have a lot of your own um personality <laughs> there brandon oh. i mean as well so um i definitely want to highlight because you're a hu- you're like me and probably even more you're a huge star wars nerd and fan and yes. you can probably s- run circles around star wars so that's we are totally bringing you in for our star wars rebels um in-depth review which we start from the new year here on diversely geek just so you know oh <laughs> yes. so that actually that, that gives me an excuse because i have not seen the final season so yeah you just couldn't I do know. it right well just um, be prepared to cry <laughs> <laughs> no yeah uh i don't know i just i lost track of it it was like one of those like life happened and i kind of just lost track and i need to what, go back what, to yeah it. you'll yeah. it's 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 kind of like airbender um which I know you love as well. Yes, I do. It's just, it comes to you at the right time in your life. And so bringing that back to full circle, like when um, William Lewis, you can both chime in, you know, when you find a fandom that you connect to that creates, um, you know, a sense of identity within you and may not be the thing that you hold on to the longest, but 
probably something that you are that that constant like creates that positive memory for you um have you can you give me a couple of examples something that's really had that type of um indelible impression on your life oh wow um <laughs> this guy's playing Assassin's Creed like oh uh, no, I wasn't told that I had to put thought into this um <laughs> oh, it's me hello what did you think I was gonna do not challenge the mind of course I'm gonna challenge oh, no. go go easy on us um <laughs> no nope <laughs> well, that's poor folk over here these poor um, things um I don't know, like, if you would call it, like, really a fandom or whatnot, but, like, one of the things that, like, happened that was, like, perfect timing for me was um, getting into the um, the Disney Mighty Ducks trilogy uh-huh. hockey movie. Because up until then, I had no idea. Yeah, in 1993, I moved to the States. And, oh, and there was this little <laughs> movie about a sport that I had never really heard before. Hockey. Hockey. I and love I, the Mighty Ducks. Loved I it, fell loved it, loved in it. love. Fell in love with that movie. And oh my God. to the point where I'm like, Dad, I want to play hockey. And my dad was like, what's that? <laughs> and, <laughs> and he's like, and my mom was like, oh, it's something sporty. He's like, cool. And then he looked how much it would cost. And, you know, he went, uh, about that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, and then the second one came out and they made, they made the trilogy out of it. And then, you know, obviously we all know that the NHL made, you know, the team came out. They made a cartoon out of it. But, it came at a point where I had just moved here. I knew no one. And out of that love for the sport and just that movie, A, uh, I became friends with my still friend, Dave uh, Rosenbluth. That Now it's like 20-something years, 25-something years that we've been friends. And, wow. you know, this this incredible friendship came came from it. And it brought me... In and out of lives of people, both in Connecticut and in Florida, to it that I mean, obviously they 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 haven't done anything more with it. They, they, you know, it's just sitting there. But it came at a point where it was perfect, and and that's yeah. just like the one thing that popped in because like it helped me find myself mm-hmm. as I was entering my teenage years and gave me guidance towards well, part part of the, to where I am now. By the way, thank you for saying Mighty Ducks TV show because I'd completely forgotten about that, and I just googled it, and it it like the memories fl- like flooded back in of watching that. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying because you, you, just the, the 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 title itself it sparked all all of us. I bet you all of us just zoom right into the memory of watching that one the first movie, okay. and even to the uniform, right? Um, exactly like and, and now they make like they, they make the rebel jerseys but if you want to come full circle as to how this may have tied in into um uh you know nerddom of like marvel and whatnot fulton reed which was the guy with like the hardest slap shot in the first movie is now on daredevil yes yes, yeah. yes he is yes. oh goodness exactly <laughs> nice nice segue william like high five <laughs> thank you thank you very much <laughs> oh, wow. i want to jump into that one and uh both of you are gonna lose your you know what when i say this one because you're gonna you're gonna be like what um i think the fandom that that kind of started all this ironically <laughs> is harry potter um I, I really think that if it wasn't for for certain people's admiration for Harry Potter, all of us wouldn't have met. Besides Brandon, obviously, because he's my cousin. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, if it wasn't for Harry Potter, we wouldn't have met. This whole show really? wouldn't have started. No, I think I feel like William is just a complete off. <laughs> like I'm gonna like get up, leave. <laughs> I'm choking <laughs> on my burger right now. I'm not gonna lie. Well, I'll bring that even fuller circle for you. So I actually met William first, right? Yeah. And where mm-hmm. was that, William? Do you remember? Mm-hmm. A very I believe it, moment. It were offici- mm-hmm. We officially met at the um, premiere of Fantastic Beasts. Well, that's actually not, not – okay, let's go back. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Really- the moment. <laughs> do, you, do you remember um um diversely geek 
hosting a little something called. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> I'm choking on my words. I'm sorry. I cannot <laughs> believe you forgot where we met. I am oh so my God. offended right now. I am so sorry. No, <laughs> okay. no, no. That is very true. So I'm like, it, it sounded right, but it didn't sound right at the same time. And okay. I do apologize. No, we met at the memorial of Alan Rickman. That we hosted. So that at the you guys time, Diversely Geek um, hosted the, which later became an internationally known and written about um, Alan Rickman m memorial series at Wizarding World of Harry Potter, where we held a series of wands up for him over the, the week after he passed away. It was tremendous in terms of the reach that it had at a, uh, media wise, but and Dank's yeah. photos that we took of him actually went international. I cannot believe you forgot that because those pictures are out there. Um, uh, that's William Phoenix. Uh, it, it hmm? No, I was saying like it, it was like a sad moment. I am, I'm sorry, give me one second because <clears throat> I'm choking <laughs> on a piece of ice. <laughs> Don't do that. You mean I took your breath away? I'm so sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> No, it's, it's 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 the foot that's so stuck in my mouth from getting it wrong. <laughs> that's okay. Boom. So right, we met right. first, um, mm -hmm. and then he became part of our life at that time. Although it wasn't as uh, we um, weren't no. as close, but we actually were close through the celebration of Harry Potter's. And then, lo and behold, what did we share together a few years later? A year later was the um. It's it's no, it's, it's the, not a premiere. Yep, the premiere. Of okay, cool. Yes, the premiere. Of Fantastic. Yep, it was the premiere of Fantastic Beast in New York. So, which was crazy. That's a crazy thing to experience together. And which then, for the record was was not planned. It just happened that. Yeah. I was in New York. Katie Ayani was coming up down. Was coming down from Cali. Yep. For the Lumos. Um, yeah, me too. We were, we, we were all going for the Lumos event. You guys, like, I wasn't even supposed to be there that day, and then nope. that whole thing happened, and we ended up being at the premiere. That was one of those, like, literally one of those days. That... It's one of those days. Yep. It was that kind of weekend for us. And from there, it's just been a fast relationship. And then you, we, then you got introduced into the life of someone named Lewis. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which, again, was my pure coincidence, because... I didn't yeah. really know Lewis. I met Lewis through his ex. Yep. Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know. So, and it was at a random. It, no, we met at a random. Uh, we met at a Fourth of July party. Fourth of July, where I was. So, um, was it? Yes, mm -hmm. it was. Yeah, I, so, so let's go back. <laughs> Goodness, this is definitely wow. a different road from the Mike Geek Universe interview, but I Welcome love this. To our lives. <laughs> Welcome we're to, yeah, welcome to our uh, welcome to you guys and pulling together what's called six degrees of separation because in the long run that's kind of where I was going with it. <laughs> in the long run, we're all back together. But how? Who would have ever known that all those years ago when yeah. we hosted that first event? And slowly but surely, William and I have oh our lives have always intersected. If you've noticed, you know, in terms of fandom. Which and, makes me feel good because, like, part of me is going. So wait, if Alan Rickman never passed away, none of this would be happening right oh, now. Oh goodness gracious me! Oh it gosh, it makes my heart cry. <laughs> no, no, that's the wrong turn of events to focus on. So let's not go there. <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Let me just breathe. I, I completely threw her off the game. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a non disclaimer on the beginning of this of, of this episode to let people know who they're listening to. <laughs> it's the man by media boys who are in Man town. by Media Boys. Well, hey, wait a second. You can't be you can't be sexist about that. Because I am kinda on that. Oh, okay, okay. So it's the man by its media non conforming don't um, assume my gender. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll go with that one for right now. But remember that that um, Diversely Geek in general, we are an organization, and you guys know this. Uh, everybody knows this about us. We're really about um, acceptance without labels, right? Connectivity mm -hmm. without ne negativity, as I said. So we really don't – we don't um, work in any – in a level of, of you know – 
applying labels to anyone. That's very important to understand. Just in case anyone was worrying that we were going woof, rogue on you. Because we're not. So <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely this has been fun. A lot of good conversation. I just am wondering, you know, um, if you if I had to really like – I mean, I think for Lewis, I might have an idea, but if I were to put you on the spot and say the fandom that has shaped the person you are today, I mean, that's the whole compilation of the um, the things and the works that you have in, in in place, whether it's the show, whether it's the cosplay, whether it's the film, whether it's the, um, you know, the YouTube or even writing, because I know some of you do some other things. Um, tell me, I mean, which one do you think has really shaped you the most in terms of being a foundation for you, the, the, your, your infrastructure. I know that's a big question, but does, if that that's, makes sense to you, you know, so for some hard. people, it's a superhero. So for some people, it's a writer. Yeah. Or music. I'll give you guys a chance to think. I, I'll go over the obvious one that I, we've gone over this in a, in a previous episode of MGU. Lord so, of the Rings. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, a hundred percent. I mean, Lord of the Rings has impacted my life since I was a child um, I was introduced to the animated series uh, when when I was a kid. I was probably about five years old when I started watching it. And then I got into the book, obviously all brought on by my father. And then the movies when they came out and that became a huge part. And honestly, we wouldn't have the podcast if it wasn't for Lord of the Rings and our little uh, quote unquote feud between William and myself. Uh, that sparked all this mega thing that we blew up this last year and did. <laughs> and it turned into a podcast. I mean, we, we started a podcast because of that little friendly feud that we had. And just, it, it was, it was for fun. And we just, friendly. I walked up and sat. He compared Harry Potter to Twilight. I don't know what <laughs> that is. <laughs> yeah, I remember, that. I remember that video. Yeah. <laughs> I got, I got my answer. Yeah. <sighs> Are you done with yours, Louis? Yeah, 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 that's it. Okay, cool. Uh, so mine is actually an album. Um, it's In Rainbows by Radiohead. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Uh, it's my favorite album probably of all time and my favorite album of theirs. And um, it just holds a special place in my heart. I got it my sophomore year of high school. I went to a concert. Uh, yes, of them with Lewis and my dad. I remember my dad being like, I can only go if... He's like, you can only go if I go. And I was like, <laughs> then buy yourself a ticket because I am not missing this. <laughs> and Because uh, it was on a school night. So we went and it was in West Palm Beach, which is like an hour and a half drive from Miami. Um, yeah. And I remember we listened to it. What was it? Like the entire car ride back, we were listening to the album or something. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, were you with us, Lewis, in the car? No, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you? Yeah. And um, it just holds a special place because I remember, you know, I'm a teenager. I'm very impressionable at the time. And I remember uh, learning how to drive with that CD on and listening to my with my mom. And my mom had never, other than music that she introduced me to, showed an interest in something that I liked music wise. And she was like, I really like this album. Yeah, and that, uh, too. that is a fantastic album and um yeah so that and now that album holds even more uh of an impact on me because since my mom passed away every time i listen to it specifically some songs like you're all i need and uh, weird fishes yes. i think of her so um yeah that's what i chose i i really like that album and for anyone that has never listened to that album please go do yourself a favor and listen to In Rainbows. And it's it is a- actually a free album on their website and they completely yes. uh, crowdfunded that whole album. So yes. there is no studio attached to it or anything. It's completely free to download off of their yeah. website. In Rainbows is fantastic. It's 11 years old at this point. So yeah. 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 William? Um, I'm choking on a, another ice cube over here. <laughs> no, 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 I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> that was, that was like that was be- that was really um perfect, Brandon. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that music was something that um that had that type of impact on you because it's funny. Like if you hadn't have mentioned music, I never would have thought of that. Uh, because 
you automatically assume on the show that it has to deal with some sort of like visual or, or not yeah like some sort of visual medium like whether it be no. anime uh books or or film or whatever show of anything or comics and when you said music i was like huh that kind of opened another door for me in my memories and then i you know i remembered that so that's why i brought that one up so we have this belief that um we're all geek about something like like lewis said at the beginning mm. um and that our fandom passions are things that that create positive connections in our lives right yeah. so i believe that wholeheartedly and that could be whether or not you you design backpacks it could be whether or not you you create and and design houses and buildings or um you know cars or if you're a painter or you're you know oh my god just anything you can think of that mm-hmm. that you can imagine that is a medium for science technology engineering art or math has the ability to be transformed as as a fandom passion and i believe it so wholeheartedly that's why we have the shows the way that we do them and why we do this show is for people to be able to sometimes connect to something while they're on the show just talking about it and they're like whoa this meant so much in my life and yeah it was a fandom and yeah it's it's been amazing for us to have that opportunity. So that was beautiful. I just wanted you to know that. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> I appreciate it. thank you. Aw. Aw. Okay, now everyone's crying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no, no, I mean, it, it, um, to go off kind of like on um, what Brandon was saying, I think like the my ultimate fandom, my first ever fandom, has to be the Beatles. Um, the Beatles are so good. My my mom uh, was a Beatle fan. I became a Beatle maniac. Um, and there's been so many times where a Beatles song or something was happening in which was significant or that stayed with me that involved the Beatles that um, I think uh, it's, I don't know, like uh, the first time I saw my mom cry was in 1991 when we were leaving Hanover College. Uh, my sister has been there for the first time. Penny Lane was playing on the radio, and ex- right, it, it exactly. And it was like the first time I saw my mom actually cry because we were leaving my sister overseas. We were still living in Europe at the time. Uh, I cried two weeks ago, or yeah, some, a couple of weeks ago, because uh, on the anniversary of John Lennon's death, I mm-hmm. found myself across the street from. Uh, the Dakota, right where it happened, around the time that it happened, and there were must have been about fifty, sixty people surrounded, surrounding the mosaic of Imagine, and mm-hmm. we were singing Beatles songs. And I, I looked at my girlfriend. I'm like, if they start playing Imagine, I'm probably gonna lose it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna lose my my stuff, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> caught myself on that one. Um, and sure enough, within like a minute or two somebody requested to play Imagine and they just started playing it together and all these emotions, all this. So the Beatles is where it all started for me. The Beatles will probably where it will always be. And it's my, my, my refuge. It's my go-to. It's my, it's, it's my, my safe space. If you want to put it that way, whenever I'm in a bad mood, whenever I'm in a down mood, whenever I feel like the world's coming down on me, I put on yes. some Beatles music and I'm good to go. Some rubber soul, man. Some rubber I, soul. I agree, oh. man. The Beatles Imagine are... Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. <laughs> Derailed into the Beatles now. Because <laughs> 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 all of us are like, the Beatles are amazing. Oh, yeah. um, so we can do an entire episode on the Beatles because as you can imagine, yeah. I, actually uh, grew, I grew up in New York with the Beatles. So it was definitely something I can... Um, express a little bit of my experience with having had an amazing opportunity, you know, um, to experience the music the way that I did. Um, they, uh, very much, William, in keeping with what you said, there is a movie called Across the Universe. Yes! yes. Okay. Best yes. musical movie ever! Yes. Um, so, but yes. Way, way ahead of its time and way, way, way not yeah. as uh, underappreciated. Um, that 100%. soundtrack has been uh, the core of our healing. 
through so much difficulty in my family's life for myself and my children. And when we need something, I will hear that soundtrack being played here in the house or in the car or somewhere. And we all know. I, that- I actually think that there's a song in that movie that is better than the original. Which uh, one? Because I, I probably agree with you. <laughs> uh, I just seen the beginning face. of a new podcast. I can feel it. Uh, yeah, I've just, it's coming. I've just seen a face and the entire like sequence when they're bowling and they're jumping over the things, the, like the, Oh, in the college. Yes. Uh, yeah, I I'll give you that. Bowling and they start singing the song. I think that rendition of that song is actually better than the original. And There's that's a lot of that. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal. Let me tell you something, man. Oh, oh my God. The actors, they are, oh me, I just can't even, I can't even express how is it possible to get Black Blackbird uh, the, the way that it was? I, oh I can't. Oh my God! Get, yes, because yes. that's just. Oh my God! I just. Oh, oh my goodness! It won't be Talk long. About an right? underappreciated it song. Oh, um, God. it's just. I'm sorry. It's just. Yeah. Okay. You got me in the feels now. You see what? <laughs> you, <did>? <laughs> <laughs> you, you totally have us. You know. Wow! I can't believe it. It never once occurred to us as a team. We've never had this discussion in here with a, my geek universe with this exploration. We found out that we're all huge fans of this movie and this soundtrack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Paul, that's Paul the- McCartney, I think, is the only uh, um, I got to see him live for the first time like a year ago, two years ago now, or a year and a half. He is the only artist to this day that when he took the stage, I actually started tearing up and crying. No I, other artist, no matter how strong of a how strong of a fan I am, has been able to do that. I've had the pleasure, the well, the unpleasure of meeting him, and I, it was one of the most disappointing experiences ever. I will really? tell you that much. Yes, he, I mean, he is not yeah. the most approachable person. I think I'll leave it at that. And I said that I thought that was a very sad thing that we that that happened. But at the same time, like we have to go through those experiences too, right? Because you know. Idols and idolizations don't always make for the best bedfellows <laughs> when it comes to finding out who we are. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's a lot of times with fandom we get we can get really hyper focused on something and lose our own identity. So you know sometimes we go through the the parting of ways from somebody like that. That's so sad. I'm sorry. I just wax profa- profound on there. <laughs> <laughs> wax poetic. Oh my god! Um, so wow, this was amazing. You guys, oh, now you have me completely, you know, in, in the mindset of thinking about how about how everything has um has such relevance in in, in creating the person that we are today. Um, whether it's the the written work, the artistic work, the scientific work, I'm gonna like like really throw y'all for a loop on this one, okay? Um, can you tell me about something in science, something across? And I'll let I'll let it be about space and um and time I'll travel, etc. That has really <laughs> also you know impressed you, um and or impressed on you. Hmm. Challenge. Time. Time Wait, I, no, I, got, I I got lost on the fact that you said let it be, and I was still stuck on the Beatles. Can you repeat that? <laughs> yes, you know I did that on purpose. I'm so sorry. I I know. I and you know, know you're, I made you sing in your it. head. I got it. Yes, let that's what it off. Be, Let it be. Okay, okay. <laughs> you guys have to know I will sing for everything because that's my life. Uh, <laughs> little known fact, DG, my friends, in I my music life. all the way through uh, oh, college. So. <laughs> It was one of the other things I love to do. William, um, I think there's a fourth Death Star calling your name, buddy. Oh, my God. No more choking <laughs> on anything, please. No more choking. Oh. Did you just say this man can't sing? Did you <laughs> that, that, William, that's basically what he said, yeah. William, in, in the words of, of <laughs> Steins, instead of swing away, sing away, buddy. <laughs> sing away. Sing away. Sing oh away, William. God. Sing away. Steins. Oh, oh, my goodness. We are such nerds. So I'm you're nervous. you're saying, Misha, anything with space? Space, science, technology. Guess what? You just identified it because science is actually totally a movie that's based on all oh, of that. And I, I love that movie. But anyway, what do you, so was there something in your, I mean, like for me, we're huge. Um, we were huge fans of Carl Sagan. 
huge <laughs> of the cosmos. I think cosmos is so good. Oh, I think mine was 2001 Space Odyssey. My well, grandmother duh. introduced that. Okay, okay, yeah, we, we all saw that one coming. We all saw that one coming, buddy. We should, <laughs> That's why I was we like, should, wait, I should make yours anything but 2001. Oh. <laughs> Challenge laid down. How about you go. Bill and Ted? Are you kidding me? Bro, at that point, just back to the future, man. Bill and Ted. Back to the future for me. <laughs> Bill and Ted is about space travel. Hmm. I'm just space going to wrap travel. everybody in one big happy gift and go with Doctor Who. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying going... to avoid it. I was like, all right. I'm like, I'm not avoid that. Where I mean, going... it wasn't childhood. <laughs> we don't need roads. We yeah. need a TARDIS. <laughs> okay. I wasn't going to go with that. Sure. Sure. Wrong phone box, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And there's another podcast. We have <laughs> Who versus Back to the Future versus Bill and Ted. Bill right. and Ted. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> oh, dear God. Um, well, I mean, like, Doctor Who, like, it's, it's great, but because, like, it really, for how it started, and, and, you know, if you're listening to the show, you don't really need a rundown of what Doctor Who is, but. Yeah, seriously. Or, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's, it's, it's. As much as it doesn't have the same original premise of this is a science show that's going to teach you stuff, it still does. Whether it is something, something scientific or something that's more maybe you take to heart. Maybe it's something that you're going through something and you watch the uh, – you're going through a certain event in your life and you just happen to watch the right episode and, and it gets you. Like the Van Gogh episode with Matt Smith. Oh, my mm. God. That, that – probably one of the best episodes it's ever been because it's like how many times just even the four of us have we sat there and second guess ourselves oh my god wondered if what we're doing in that moment is going to make a difference whether in your life or in somebody's life or it's going to be worth it and every time that i go through that i stop and that song that plays starts playing in my head and then mm-hmm. obviously it's followed by that because Look! Look at Van Van Gogh could have easily not been any artist, any anybody that is anybody could have easily not been. But that one specific episode gets me, and it will live with me forever because it keeps reminding me: never give up, always push. On that note, that's awesome. Oh my god, that was so good. Okay, I think we're. <laughs> so- <laughs> I, I want to I wanna give my honest opinion because I, I said, you know, I was just joking around. But uh, honestly, it was probably Time Machine, the original version. The H.G. Wells uh, movie back in the day. It was uh, 1956, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that movie was actually introduced to me at about three or four years old by my mother. And I, I grew an obsession with not only the, the Morlocks, which, yeah. Leave it to me to enjoy the mor- the Morlocks. Out of I love horror. the Morlocks. I love um, them. And Morlocks. that was actually my introduction to horror. So you were it- a demented child, man. <laughs> you were a demented child. <laughs> that explains so much. <laughs> okay, well, was I, I was- demented because I like them too? No, 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 Nisha. Don't worry. You you don't stoop to his level. <laughs> I was over here watching nice like chill children things. Your parents were just. Introducing you to like the filth, <laughs> painting you. Oh my god! Uh, but no, honestly, I loved that movie, and I loved that aspect of time travel, and that kind of introduced it into into films, honestly. And it kind of paved the way for a lot of time travel, serious time travel movies and shows, and all that stuff. And then I grew an appreciation because of time machine i grew to to love sliders and quantum leap and oh my god oh my god scott back an episode on quantum leap because i would love oh uh, i was going more i I love quantum leap i was going more sliders sliders oh my god that's a hundred percent what brain steam is about (laughs) right davis back in the day uh all right (laughs) let Nisha, wrap this up because if it's up to <laughs> us, this is gonna go on for a lot oh longer gosh. than now. You guys, I love this because the funniest thing is, is I would say probably ninety five percent of anything you guys talk about, I know, <laughs> and yeah. it makes makes me really, and that's why I love doing my geek universe. Um, 
because it's it's not mine, right? It's ours. And but we end up figuring out, like I said before, that we all have the shared common my geek universe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like that's why, you know, I, I have these conversations and give the audience and fans an opportunity to like just tap into the how crazy <laughs> and, and, and how indelible our fandoms are to our lives and how much <laughs> shaped who we are as people, you know? Special note on the crazy part. <laughs> yes. Special <laughs> note on the crazy part because it's all, because it's Man Bites Media folks that was on air today. Yeah, right? um, I, have, so, I have no idea what you mean by that. <laughs> I really... <laughs> oh my God. So I am going to try to seriously wrap up now and, you know, let you guys um, talk a little bit about your show um, and, you know, what you have coming up in the fu- in the future. And um, so basically today, um, what, what you guys really helped us to bring to the audience was a tale of magic and fantasy, of hope and imagination and possibilities. I just don't think that you realize it. But when you listen back to the episode, you're going to realize that you told us about how, you know, how your fandoms and embracing those fandoms and identifying them have really sparked um, belief in you and imagination and, and, and kind of laid a foundation for who you are. And you completely helped us to look at how we connect to our geek nature. Woohoo! That was such an amazing job. And um, I think that sometimes we have, we have a hard time um, embracing our, our geek nature and then expressing it because, well, it wasn't cool back in the day. Right. Um, but oh, it today, was always cool. Are you kidding? Come on. It's now. always cool. I know today. And that's what we know, what we're here to do. Let everybody know. It's cool to be nerd. Just saying. Um, and how important it is to identify as a child with something that's positive and and and, and impresses on us with a positive role model or archetype or story or belief or hope. And that that's um yeah, I'm I couldn't be happier with the sam- examples that all of you gave today, especially since I pretty much knew all of them. I was like, Yes, I'm not crazy, okay. <laughs> Well, <laughs> no, well, yes, I am crazy, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> boy. Uh, boy, there are a couple other crazy folks who like the same things as me, so that's awesome. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Comes out there. Huh? <laughs> your New Yorking comes out there. That was my New York accent, actually. I thought it was British accent. It was a, it was a bit. Well, I, I am a, I am Indian, Caribbean, New Yorker, and now Floridian, so my accent can get very muddled. <laughs> When it actually comes out, so um, like so, an unwetted lake. Yes. <laughs> uh, nobody's gonna catch that reference. God damn. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Take it home, me, shall I not? And my oh my god, I, I'm telling you. Okay, guys. So <laughs> let's do this. Um, thanks for being on, and I I want each of you to let me know where what you're doing right now. Tell us how to find you on your social media sites, and that would be awesome. Okay, so you could check out any of the stuff, and pretty much if you like the the dialogue that we just had here, it's very laid back, very uh, chill, just kind of a um, uh, conversation at a bar, a conversation at a, at just a diner talking amongst people about movies. That's what we do. We bring it very, just a chill atmosphere. And we talk about really good movies. We bring up the news. We joke about it. We have serious conversations sometimes and we go deep into it, but keywords sometimes. And sometimes, you know, we, we playfully and we, we harass each other a little bit and, and we have fun with it. And that's the, the Man Bites film episode show that we do every week on Fridays. We drop that. Uh, on Wednesdays, we do Man Bites Retro, which is more serious, more um, artistic point of view on films or anybody in film history. And then on Mondays, we actually do um doctor who in review with diversely geek and nisha in particular uh host co-hosting the the show together and we basically do a week in review about doctor who whether it be our favorite episode our favorite person or the current season that's in play right now and we have uh well we're gonna make the official announcements since this is gonna drop after the new year um that we are officially launching man bites spotlight and this is going to be an in-depth look 
but not into the regular fandoms, not the trilogy of Star Wars, the series of Star Wars movies or the series of Lord of the Rings movies or the series of Harry Potter and which other fandoms we ever choose. It's going to be into the mythology, the history, the behind the scenes stuff that is written by fans and the, the writers alike. And we go into the real nitty gritty of the mythology, the world building of these stories. And we're going to have fun with that. Uh, so that's going to be coming starting in February. We're going to be launching that. And it's pretty much going to be running throughout the year uh, every week on Sundays as of right now. It's going to be lit. It's oh, going to be lit. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're uh, <clears throat> we're probably gonna be bringing in like guest speakers for like different episodes. Yeah, uh, exactly. people that you know, like us, have immersed themselves in the um, the fandom. Uh, so you know, be on the lookout. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be interesting and informative. Um, William, you want to tell us a little bit about what your um, how we can find you. Uh, well, to find me, I am mostly active on um, Facebook and Instagram at House of Phoenix Cosplay. Uh, you've got to put the little, um, what you want to call it, uh, indentations for Instagram. But House of Phoenix Cosplay, it's where I am. Uh, it's not just the cosplay, but meeting celebrities like we were talking earlier. I got to meet Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, I got to meet... Multiple um, times multiple times but uh <laughs> yesterday last night i got to meet uh bobby v- uh vitale some would even um, say he's a stalker <laughs> Just some, some would but we don't talk to those people because we don't need that kind of negativity in our lives uh, <laughs> but uh you know it's it's i i find myself in the right place at the right times and i like to share it with people because i know that there are situations that people may not be able to experience on their own. So if they're able to see it and feel it through somebody, why not? Why keep life is too short to keep things to yourself. So a lot of craziness, a lot of happiness, a lot of sharing house of Phoenix cosplay. Awesome. Hello. Oh my God. What was that? (laughs) What was that? Oh, it was just a hello. Hello that showed up out of nowhere on my phone. Um, Brandon, and do you um, have anything specific? So I have Snapchat and I have Instagram. Don't really use them. I'm more of a lurker. I should start using them, honestly. <laughs> oh um, Did he go there? Yeah, dude. Good. I use it to pass the time. I don't particularly post things on it. I just I like to see what other people post, but whatever. He's a lurker. <laughs> I'm a lurker. Oh, we'll find you on but, um, all but, things- Man bites media. <laughs> yes, but I do have a uh, a YouTube thing that uh, kind of is not. I'm not doing it at the moment, but there's a a um, there's a lot that you can watch. There's over 100 episodes. Uh, it's called Game Side Manners, and it's basically two, sometimes three people, and we play video games, and we just talk to each other. It's kind of laid back, like what I do with uh, William and Lewis. Um, Rated R though. It's super super graphic, not like this. We're 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 holding our tongues for this show. Um, <laughs> and so, I very yeah. much we very much appreciate it. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh Game Side Manners on YouTube. There's a lot of stuff there. Uh check it out, subscribe if you like it. And yeah, I might be renewing that soon with a friend. So yeah. All right. Ooh, yeah. Pretty awesome. Well, um, as you guys know, I'm Nisha M. Your Geek Mom, otherwise known as Nisha T. Mulchin. And I am the co-host, co-founder of Diversely Geek. Diversely Geek Discusses, which is our YouTube and podcast show. And on our podcast, we have Diversely Geek Discusses My Geek Universe, which are personal um, interviews, as we had today, where we bring on wonderful, lovely folks, and we look at our journey to... Um, identifying and embracing our inner geek. We also have our weekly um, Doctor Who in review with the wonderful Louis Lacoe. And we will be having a amazing New Year's Day episode, right, that we're going to be live streaming. And that will be going out to everyone pretty soon so we can get some call-ins. 
And we also have our twice a month episode called Brainsteam, the science behind basically supporting, identifying, and, and you know, like um, heralding all of the amazing um, science and technology, engineering, art, and math behind fandoms and behind the things that we love, like episodes that we did was the science behind horror and the psychology of horror, which was like amazing episodes, which Lewis is, um, was on one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, and we will have a few upcoming episodes, which I think – will make everyone think and I like I think I'm sorry I say think too much um and we also will be launching an entire series uh that that really focuses on um identifying our um cosplay uh our cos fashion and what it is to embrace positive positive body image and uh, positive self-image so there's just so much coming up i can't even get it all out of my mouth but um (laughs) can't wait for the new year as we have so much going on and look forward to seeing everyone again hopefully with our the youtubes which will be coming out again with the new year and and, um, the events that we have planned. Our first uh, event for the year, Lewis, is going to be uh, Hamelfest, right? Yes. It's going to be on February 9th where we will be supporting the Hamilton uh, birthday celebration that will be uh, in Tampa. And that's going to be pretty awesome because it's going to be the first time we're doing something like that. So we should be bringing you, I hope, a QA and a from there and we'll see what else. Uh, So, Hey, now that I rambled on so much about what we do, I want to thank all three of you for being here today and for being part of the Diversely Geek uh, family. Before we close out, I wanted to give out a shout out real quick. Um, Also, our YouTube um, associate that we work with closely because we don't have a YouTube show ongoing anymore, but we do have 150 episodes. So if you do want to see that, you can. Um, You can actually check out Narcotic Casserole. And he is constantly, John is constantly doing episodes and very fun uh, thing to check out. So I forgot to, to mention him on there. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, that was a good save, Lewis. Good save. <laughs> <laughs> He's also a, um, a part of our Whovian family. Oh, yes. um, so I'm very excited about our New Year's Day episode. I can't wait to see how it goes. It's going to be um, something new for us. And I'm really hoping, uh, cross fingers, it'll be very successful and we'll be able to bring to you our love and our passion for Doctor Who. So this is Nisha M, your Geek Mom, signing off and saying goodbye and love to everyone from Diversely Geek, the Diversely Geek family. And wow, I cannot believe that we'll be coming to you from a new year a while with our next episode. So happy new year to everyone and stay safe. Love to everyone. Have a great week. Bye. Toodles.